Hi, I'm Dan. I live in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn with my wife, Olga. We live right around the corner from the Chabad of Sheepshead Bay. That's Rabbi Cohen. He's been living in Sheepshead Bay with his wife, Tippi, for the last 20 years. Their whole life is built around helping Jewish people connect with their roots. Well, we're going now to the King's BY. They have a gathering, and we're going to blow the shofar for them. I think our shul is a really special place. We like to have a good time, and that's why I want to tell you about it. It's a place that means so much to so many different people. We've been through a lot in the past year, but the community is expanding, and I think the future is looking very bright. So this story really isn't about me. This is the story of all the lives that have been touched by the Chabad of Sheepshead Bay. My name is uh, Motel Vigdorczyk, and uh, these are my two sons. Say your name. Shua. Nachman. When I come every time to the Chabad house, Rabbi Cohen's really happy to see me. I daven, and I love playing with Sviki. I became religious maybe two, three years before coming to Brooklyn. <laughs> so it only took you four years to grow this beard? Uh, yes. Yes, it was under the guidance of Rabbi Quinn. <laughs> My wife, uh, at first she complied. Um, after a while she couldn't do it anymore. And, um, you know, I didn't know what to do. And uh, at this time I met Rabbi Quinn. So it's like a mini cruise that the boat takes us to Statue of Liberty and back from uh, the pier of Ships of Bay. She would, she would say, she, she said she wouldn't go because a bunch of people in the suits and the beard, <laughs> beards. And I didn't want to come. And when I saw Tsipi, she was actually the reason I started coming here. So when I saw her in the cruise, she was so warm and she was so inviting. And she said she, you know, made me feel very comfortable. So that's how my journey started. You know, uh, Shabbos in the Cohen's house is not like Shabbos anywhere else. Everything, just the, the way they take care of you, the food, the l'chaims, the nagunim, I mean, it's just fantastic. My name is Esther Hanasa, and my daughter's name is Hannah. I feel confidence here because no one, never in this family, show my daughter is different. I want to cry now. <laughs> I really came back home. Uh, lots of memories in this room. This particular room has been used for everything. Anything from a uh, simcha, a wedding, a chupa, a brit milah, uh, holidays, uh, services, you name it, it's been done here. We had, a, my, my wife and myself, we had a chupa here. It it took us exactly uh, 10 days, and we had this place all beautifully decorated. So, um, since that day, I haven't left, you know, and my life has changed drastically um, in every possible way. You know, I, I look at things differently, I, I see the world differently, my kids go to yeshiva. I, uh, Baruch Hashem, have five kids now. Back then I only had one child. It was really just, uh, you know, everything uh, that I did not expect to have at this wedding, but it was perfect. And it was <laughs> I, I just came from vacation seven days, and I come straight to Chabad. I didn't come to my house even. I didn't see my, I'm a dog, Ma, Miley. I come to Chabad. Unfortunately, we all know the next part of the story. Superstorm Sandy blew through our neighborhood and left a trail of devastation in its wake. And our shul was one of the buildings that was severely damaged. And I went down, we had like an inch of water or something like that. I went down to four stories upstairs. The next time I went to check was about an hour later. And then it was already four feet high. You can see there, that's the water level. That's where the water level came up to. Completely wrecked. 
That's the beamer. The power didn't come on for several weeks, and the rabbi's family lived without heat and hot water. But we kept our daily minions going, and we kept our Shabbos services going. And then one day, the lights came back on. And just as the lights came back on, someone from our community arrived, and they had donated a brand new Sefer Torah to the shore. It was a really beautiful moment, and it was something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. The community came together and we cleaned up the shul and we rebuilt and now we're back in business. The only thing is, once we got down there, we realized we needed a bigger shul to begin with. But I guess it's a good problem to have. I mean, I know we're in New York City, but uh, uh, we have to expand. There's really no room. We need a bigger place and a bigger shul now. This place, when we come here, I don't feel like an outsider. I was always like not sure if I want to go to a shul or Chabad, but when I stepped in here, I never left. I go to classes once a week here. You know, there are a lot of synagogues in the area, a lot of shuls in the area, but I truly feel special about this shul, uh, primarily because of this family. You know, I come here, I, I like put my head on my, in my, in my uh, kapota, and I become, like I connect with my real self. What are you going to do right now? So, what I really want to say is that coming to this Chabad house, making Judaism an everyday part of your life, it's not about external changes. It's about realizing the full potential of your life. If you're coming here for a class or during holidays or on any regular Shabbat, there's something about this place that touches the lives of everybody. And I think we all come away with an idea of how we can make the world just a little bit brighter. And what could be more important than that? <laughs>